All right, welcome back. Our continuing coverage of Tropical Storm uh, Lee as it makes its way, uh, hopefully, to a, a better place away from us. And a better place is get away, get far away, northeast, north, uh, wherever you can. Phone lines are open, 879-1231. As we continue to roll in some footage uh, that continues to come in. And, of course, we're riding around with law enforcement, so sometimes it takes a little while to, to get here, but it does get here. There's Golden Meadow. You can see how high Bayou Lafouche is for sure. But this is inside the hurricane protection levy. So you can tell why people would be a little nervous. Look how high that water is. And this, once again, is what Wendell Curall was talking about just a little while ago is that water has to drop outside the floodgate to allow them to open it up to get this stuff out of here. But this stuff continues to pile up because you have water coming in from the north draining down in Golden Meadow. So they can't open that floodgate until it is the same level or below. And therein lies the problem. So it's a cat and mouse game of wait and see. And certainly, this is a very tense, strategic thing that happens in these storms. And you, you just got to wait. I mean, you can't open the floodgate if the waters outside of it are higher than this because it, I mean, it's common sense. But don't make it easier when you're watching that water come up. And if it had come up, you know, any more, that, that it, we were really on the verge of having some major problems. And there still could be some problems. Look how high that water is uh, in Golden Meadow. So, and this was sent via our, you know, we hook up uh, cables and communications cameras in different parts. And this is sent through the one on the floodgate. We sent it back. Uh, Chris Carter was out there filming today. So certainly, you know, it's, it's a scenario that has played out before. And for the most part, people have been through it. And we'll take some calls as we now watch footage of the different areas. HTV, welcome to Bayou Time. You're on. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, I have uh, some concerns. Okay. Um, and uh, maybe Mr. Falk might can help out. All right, he's sitting right next to me. Go ahead. There's a lot of traffic that's going down Doolarge that probably shouldn't be. And um, there's some homes down there that's fixing to be uh, inundated with water. Okay. And we're hoping that they can put somebody by the bridge and and stop these people from sight, sightseeing uh, down there. All right, I'll let Sergeant Falk comment on that. Uh, I agree with you 100%. It's actually outside of our jurisdiction. Uh, but I will pass that information on. Our dispatch is currently monitoring HTV 10, uh, so I'm sure they're going to pass that information on to the sheriff's office and see that somebody goes out and checks that location. And if there's any sightseers that are just dwelling through, uh, they'll, they'll remove them properly. I uh, surely would appreciate that. Thank you okay. for the call. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure if our air conditioner just kicked on in here or if that's rain bands over us, so I'm not sure. I'll, I'll let Jason tell me. If it, I, I might be hearing things at this particular point in time, so let's take another call as we continue to watch footage. HTV, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, I'm also calling from Bayou du Large. Okay. We've been, I'd say, at least 98% of the traffic that's been passing is sightseers. They are not slowing down when they get into the water area. They're causing big waves to come into the yard and stuff and doing a lot of damage down here. You know, that baffles me that people just continue not to listen to public officials, law enforcement. We've said it a million times. They have no compassion for anybody when they do that. And it's just a no-brainer that you would go and cause or wreak havoc on somebody that has water near their house. And you still want to go do that and, and make them even more tense. Earlier we had, uh, they were hauling cattle from down here, and they were causing, they were going so hard in the water, they were causing water, we got our cars on the side of the road, 
it was causing water to get into the cars down here. Well, it, I called the sheriff's office about it. Yeah. Did they go out? I have no idea. Okay. But, I, I, you know, we continue to urge people, and we, we will continue to urge them, that you you have to be, it, it's not about, it's about compassion sometimes. It's about, you know, taking care of your fellow man and just, just doing the right thing and being nice sometimes. And sometimes it amazes me that, that people can't be that way, but, you know, I, I guess I should know by now, as we look at shots of Lower Montague at this point. But but I appreciate the call. All right, thank you. Thank you. HTV, welcome to Bayou Time. Go ahead, please. Yes, hi, Mr. Foles. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Look, this is Sherry. I want to let you know, I live on Crochetville Road in Montague. Yes. And the water's about two foot in our yard. Right now, the water's coming up like, oh, it came up within a matter of, what, 25, 30 minutes? Right. And uh, there's a lot of people pass. I guess looking, you know, they're passing so fast on the South Shaver Road. If they can hear me, I wish they'd go down. It's like pouring so much more water in the yard and everything. We have stuff floating. They have, I mean, they have a bunch of uh, boards and all just floating over the road into our yard and stuff. But just to let you know that, yeah, there's a lot of water on South Road. Hey, did, so, did somebody put some hay in the ditch over there? Yeah, I think uh, Mr. Uh, I don't say name if because I don't have any confirmed thing yet. But okay, yeah. Did anybody see somebody putting hay in there to to stop the water from draining? No, I passed the other day and I saw that truck there. And then when I passed back, they had like two or three big bags of hay that they had. I think they put that there to stop the uh, that little drainage right there. Right. Yeah, I think that that's what I had asked my husband when I passed us. I think he might have put that there. Or did it fall off his trailer? You know, I wasn't sure, but I think I think he put it there to stop the drainage or whatever. I just saw two deputies passing down this road, so you know they're probably checking, you know, checking out the water too. So okay, well, I was just checking. I don't, I don't have any proof or anything. I just had a couple of calls during a break, so I was oh. just checking to see. But I, I'll look into it for sure. Okay, well, I will let you know that they, they do have a lot of water. At least all was like in a matter of 30 minutes, it just came up real. I mean, our yard, our neighbor's yard, is flooded. The water coming from the body is really bad. Yeah, and it's, it's got to get some relief, and they got to open those floodgates, and then, then you're going to see it start to start Yeah, we, to had pack, we had rows down the body earlier by the point of our rain rows to see how high the water was by the levee. Right. It's really hot. I mean, it's, it's almost up to the levee at the point of our rain rows. All right, well, hang in there. Okay, y'all be safe. Thank you so much for taking my call. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay. HTV, welcome to the program. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Uh, Mr. Martin. Yes. Look, I, I live over here in Gray over here. Mm -hmm. And I like uh, two big trees that be like in the way my bedroom at. And um, uh, y'all don't have nobody to come and like, cut the trees or something like that. I can't afford to get them cut down. You know what I'm saying? Well, the tree, trees didn't fall, did they? They tall. They tall trees. No, but they, they did not fall down, did they? No, the, the limbs, the big limbs falling out the tree. I, I see. rest in Tessa's uh, The wind and stuff was picking up for two days. I ain't rest yet because I just had to jump up and run out the bedroom and go on this porch we had built. The, the, you know, the, the get calmed down. And then my husband, he was home that night, so I stayed in the bed, but we could hit a the tree limb breaking out there, you know? Right. Well, you know what? It's just your luck because I have Miss Orlanda Williams and Mr. Michelle Claude, the parish president of Terrebonne Parish. And, and Michelle, this, this caller was asking about trees, but I would assume if the trees are on private property that they have to get a tree service. Right. If it's on private property, we're precluded from actually doing it unless it's actually a a security problem or I mean security a safety problem right. for some other residents so ma'am unfortunately you're probably gonna have to get a a tree service uh, mm -hmm. to go out there and do it and I, I know that tree services can be a little expensive at times but it's a very risky job and they they, they have very tall heights to do it but uh, I mean if you have trouble locating one I'd be glad to help you during the week if you want to Give us a call at the station and just say that you're the tree lady, and I know you're talking about. Now there's plenty of tree companies, and I can, I can try to help you out and put you in touch with a couple. Okay. All righty. All right. Thank, thank you. you. We appreciate your call. Okay. 
Bye-bye. All right, that said, joining me now, the parish president of Terrebonne Parish, Michelle Claude, and Miss Orlando Williams, of course, with the Terrebonne Parish Council. And I know they have been out and about trying to assess the situation over here. So we'll, we'll sort of jump off the footage right now and we'll give them a chance to explain some of the things that are happening. Thank you for coming by and give, right. us, give us an update, Michelle. Well, actually right now, as you know, the storm's starting to move. It's increased, it's around five miles per hour in the last update we have. It's, but unfortunately, it's moving north, where we would like for it to go northeast, because then that would give us the, the draining rains that we have, I mean, draining winds, which would be coming from the north. Uh, it is, the winds are changing in the lower parts of the parish. I've had reports from uh, Dularge, Bayou Grand Caillou, and we know from, I just finished talking to Reggie, it's dropping around Bayou Little Caillou and Bayou Terrebonne. Mm -hmm. uh, we expecting that some of these gates hopefully will be open uh, tonight or sometimes today, and we're hoping that it will be, and if they have to close it after that, you know, then they'll make that decision as time goes on. Levy District's been monitoring it. They're doing a good job. Uh, we turn closing, and it will be out of service. The Buque Bridge, of course, the uh, Falgu Canal Pontoon Bridge is out right now. The Pontoon Bridge we have over there. Uh, parts there's water on many, many roads in the lower parts of the parish, and uh, I can. I just got a report from my public works department. They have uh, one pump which, uh, when I, at the 4-8 station in Montague, that system has been pumped down and that system is actually all the way down right now. Uh, on the Bonanza pump station, we had trouble with one engine and they're working on that as we speak and that should be fine. There's four big 48-inch pumps in there and we've got that system under control. Woodlawn uh, Ranch Pump Station, they have 10, 10 pumps and they'll circulate on and off. We had a little bit of a difficulty with uh, water back circulating back into our system, but we've had a contractor in our public works department blocking the water from coming in. And the report I got around 4.15 was that they were very successful on that. Uh, unfortunately, the way the system, it was early this morning, it seemed to be okay. It worsened throughout the day and now we're on the low tide portion and the winds are changing yeah. and all the news I've been getting just recently seems to be getting better. And on the report we just received and indicate that the winds will continue to diminish. The amount of rain expected is not as great as they have been predicting over the last few days. And Martin, we're, we're looking over each and every item that comes in on all the items. And if you have any specific questions, I'll be happy yeah. to answer. Let me show you some good news, and, and I can show both of you. If we could bring up the Golden Meadow floodgate, Jason, if we can, because we've watched this for the last several hours with a drop in footage, uh, and look, it continues to drop. That has dropped from the top of that bottom wheeler to the water line, which is probably a foot now, mm -hmm. and so the scenario is going to be the same for Terrible in Paris. So the good news is, is that the winds from the south or southwest or wherever they're coming from are not sustained enough and not high enough to keep the tide from moving. So it's moving. So I think you're correct sometime tonight or whenever those floodgates can be open, then I think some people will get relief from this water. And even if that to be closed right after that, just to get letting out some water will help. It's just like opening up a big uh, drain where it can drain for a little while and we can hopefully do that. Yeah. And, and you know, Martin, again, I've, I've been driving all around the parish and I, I have to say that we're, a, Approaching this as well as possible. Our public works people are on top of this. We've had people working yeah. night and day uh, during this period of time. OEP, the emergency office with uh, that Earl handles and all these other individuals have been and will be there tonight. I want to just mention if people have problems, you know, calling the answering service is not the thing to do right now. Mm -hmm. You call 873-6357 and that's where you get uh, information and, and and people that can help. We have people there from public works, public safety, and all different branches. It's a, num a great wealth of knowledge at this time. I gotta say the communications has been tremendous throughout this whole thing. I, I think whatever the system is, keep it because it has worked 
And Orlando, I'm gonna let you jump in on that. Like it, it seems like when a call goes in that is dispersed to many different categories and somebody gets it, but what I like about it is they get it and it's accountable who it went to. So if somebody would drop the ball, we know who got the request to do it, but it seems like a lot of people are working very hard. Yeah, I just left the um, OEP, Michelle, hit it on the nose that they are doing an awesome job. We actually have our council clerk sitting there manning the phones for the council itself. So if you call that number, she can contact either one of us, but she can also transmit this information to the correct department. She showed us how it does. They, the caller comes in, she puts what department it goes to and the message, and it automatically goes straight to that person and they're handling it. I had a couple of little um, issues in my district that came through. Public Works was was there within you know minutes they had the the information to do it. But the main thing is when we're dealing with FEMA, a lot of times people worry about how we're going to get reimbursed. This system actually tracks. So you're sending this information in. They're doing purchase orders. It automatically tracks everything that we need for FEMA reimbursement and everything is sent out. Uh, Michelle sat on side of me about a. Um, a piece of uh, a little situation that arose, like he said, with the Bonanza pump station. He says, well, they're doing a uh, purchase order right now. And, I mean, Jamie was sitting right there mm -hmm. typing everything in, sending it in, and getting it out. Martin, the most important thing that I think we need to let people know is that it is still not a time for everybody to just be running around on the streets right. because the, the, the highway conditions are dangerous enough. I mean, we're willing to do this. This is what we took an oath of office for, Kyle, myself, Michelle, and all the rest of the elected officials. But I would just ask for safety precautions that people would just stay off the streets mm -hmm. so we can continue to assess the damages. It's a no-brainer. And it, it, some people are so close to getting water in their homes, and, and you might have very minimal home water, and then somebody goes drive down a street and puts water in five people's homes where they would have never had any water. Exactly. So and, and to touch on that, Martin, uh, if you're doing that, I'd hate to see the individual that videotapes you passing, pushing water in their home, because I'm sure that homeowner's insurance company is going to fight tooth and nail to get reimbursed by by you personally, or I mean, I think you're going to be held liable. And if so. you have video, I'd like to run it. That's correct. I'd like to run it on TV. But we'll take a break. We're going to come back. More questions for the parish uh, president and the councilwoman, and also Sergeant Falk. We'll be right back. Don't go away.